Hello, I'm Larry Wilson, and welcome to this segment in our study on the book of Daniel. In this segment, I'm going to do my best to show you the overwhelming amount of evidence that proves the date of our Lord's crucifixion. And uh, really, once you lay it all out in its proper order, it's an airtight case. And I'm going to do my best to demonstrate that, and I'd like to begin with by taking you to Leviticus 23, verse 5, and let's notice when the Lord's Passover began. You see, in Exodus 12, the Lord told Israel on the 10th day of the month they were to separate the lamb from the herd that they were going to use as the Passover lamb. And then on the afternoon of the 14th, they were to slay the lamb and begin roasting it because they were going to eat the lamb at the time of midnight. So the Lord's Passover begins at twilight in the last part of the day of the 14th day of the month. This is when the lamb is slain and the carcass is prepared for roasting. Leviticus 23, verse 6. On the 15th day of that month, the Lord's Feast of Unleavened Bread begins. So for seven days you must eat bread made without yeast. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the eating of the Passover lamb occurred at midnight. That's when it started, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So remember when Jesus was in the upper room, he broke bread uh, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. That was at midnight on the 15th day when they were celebrating the Passover. Exodus 12, 17. Celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread because it was on this very day that I brought you, brought your divisions out of Egypt. So what day of the month did the divisions leave Egypt? It was the 15th day of the month. So Passover, if you may recall how it was done, Passover was eaten uh, at midnight. Be and and pre pr prior to being eaten, obviously the Passover lamb was slain. As the 14th day of Nisan was coming to an end, then the lamb was roasted over fire for maybe four, five, six hours. And then the Passover meal was eaten in a hurry and on the, at midnight. On the 15th of Nisan, this is what the scripture says in Exodus 12, 11. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste, because it is the Lord's Passover. What happened at midnight? At midnight, the Lord struck down, Exodus 12, 29. The Lord struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on the throne to the firstborn of the prisoner who was in the dungeon and the firstborn of all the livestock as well. So the Passover meal began with the slaying of the lamb on the evening of the 14th at twilight. It was eaten at midnight on the 15th of Nisan each year because when sunlight occurred on the 15th, they left that Sunday morning out to, to departing Egypt. The children of Israel departed on the 15th of Nisan, which was a Sunday, Sunday morning, the 15th. They ate the Passover meal. The Passover lamb was slain on Sabbath evening. They roasted it Saturday night, what we call Saturday night. They would call Sunday night because, remember, night comes before light in God's clock. So they roasted it on Sunday night, and then Sunday morning, the 15th of Nisan, they departed Egypt. Now, notice what the law says concerning the observance of Passover. Numbers 9, verse 2. God told the Israelites, Have the Israelites celebrate, Moses, I mean, God told Moses on behalf for the Israelites, Have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time. With God, timing is everything. Celebrate it at the appointed time. At twilight on the 14th day of this month, in accordance with all its rules and regulations. In other words, get this. If you're going to celebrate Passover, 
as some Christians insist on doing, you, you have to do so in accordance with its rules and regulations. On the 14th of the month, you have to slay the lamb. That is the regulation. That's the law. A lot of people say they're celebrating Passover. They're just making that up. There is no Passover ceremony. There is no Passover feast anymore because Christ is our Passover. The Lamb has paid the price and He nailed to the cross the regulation and rules and all that went with the observance of Passover. So if you're going to observe Passover, you can't do so without doing the things required at the time of Passover. So, Moses told the Israelites to celebrate the Passover. Verse 6, But some of them could not celebrate Passover on that day because they, will, they were ceremonially unclean on account of a dead body. So they came to Moses and Aaron that same day, and they said, We have become unclean because of a dead body. There's been a death in the family. But why should we be kept from presenting the Lord's offering with the other, other Israelites at the appointed time? Moses answered them, Wait until I find out what the Lord commands concerning you. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now pay close attention to this. Tell the Israelites, When any of you or your descendants are unclean because of a dead body, or are away on a journey, in other words, if you're out of town, they may still celebrate the Lord's Passover. They are to celebrate it on the 14th day of when? The second month, not the first month, at twilight. They are to eat the lamb at midnight on the 15th together with the unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Verse 12, now watch this. They must not leave any of the food till morning or break any of the bones of the lamb. When they celebrate the Passover, they must follow all the regulations. God will not accept less. Look at verse 13. But if a man who is ceremonially clean and not on a journey fails to celebrate the Passover, that person must be What's the two words here? Cut off. What happens to Messiah in the middle of the week? He was cut off. What does it mean that a person must be cut off from his people because he did not present the Lord's offering at the appointed time? What does this mean? It means that that man will bear the consequences of his sin. It is sin. It is sin to fail to celebrate the Passover at the appointed time when the Passover was required. God clearly says so. Numbers 13, 9, 13. You can read it yourself. God says that person must be cut off from his people because he did not present the Lord's offering at the appointed time. That man must bear the consequences of his sin. With God, timing is everything. Why do you think his seventh day is such a big deal? It's time, and timing is everything. <laughs> we have examined the timing of Passover because there is an interesting problem during the crucifixion week of Jesus. There are two Passovers in the same week. The presence of two Passovers during the week of Christ's death is well known by scholars. But why there was two Passovers has been a mystery for many centuries. Let's, let's look at this. Luke 22, verse 1. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread, called the Passover, was approaching. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus, for they were afraid of the people. Verse 8. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Now, do you think Jesus is going to eat Passover at the appointed time required by the law? Of course. If he didn't, he would be guilty of sin, and his sin would be upon his own head, according to Numbers 9, verse 13. 
So Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. And where do you want us to prepare for it, they asked. And you know, Jesus tells them to go in, into town and there they'll find a man with an upper room and they are to make preparations there. And so they departed from Jesus. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. And that takes about six hours to do. When the hour came, notice this. The Bible says, Luke 22, 14, when the hour came, that's the hour to eat the Passover meal, which is midnight, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. So this is a Passover that's going to occur before Jesus is crucified. In fact, it happens the day before he's arrested. This is Thursday, this is Thursday night. Now remember, Thursday night be happens before Thursday light in God's calendar. Luke 22, 16. For I tell you, Jesus said, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Jesus and his disciples ate the Passover on the 15th day of Nisan, according to the law. Otherwise, if he didn't, Jesus sinned. And we know that he didn't sin. The scripture says there was no sin in him. There is no provision for eating Passover on any other day except the 15th day of Nisan, unless there is a journey or a, dead, a death in the family, and then Passover is to be celebrated on the 15th day of the second month, not the first. So now we find an interesting dilemma. Jesus and his disciples are eating the Passover on the 15th day of Nisan, according to the law. And because we know Jesus didn't sin, we know it has to be the 15th day of Nisan. Because that's exactly what God's law and God's clock requires. Now, the nation of Israel, though, did not celebrate Passover until two days later. In other words, Jesus ate the Passover with his disciples at the appointed time on Thursday night, Nisan 15. And remember, again, Thursday night comes before Thursday light. Then Jesus spent Thursday light, or Thursday day, if you will, on the Mount of Olives with his disciples the whole day. And then as Friday night was arriving, Friday night comes before Friday light, he retired to the Garden of Gethsemane where he was arrested. And then on Friday morning, he was taken to the high priest and then to Pilate and later crucified around 9 a.m., very early in the morning. Now, let's notice John 18, verse 28. I want to show you that there's another Passover here. Then the Jews led Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. See, he's been arrested. He's been taken to the high priest. The high priest then sends him to uh, Pilate. By now, it was early morning. This is Friday morning. Now watch this. And to avoid ceremonial uncleanness. The Jews did not enter the palace of, of Pilate. They didn't go to the governor's palace. Didn't go in there. Because the Bible says, the last part of the verse 28, they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. See, this is, this is where the dilemma is. Jesus and his disciples eat the Passover. Now Jesus is arrested. It's Friday morning, and the Jewish leaders will not go into Pilate's judgment hall because they, want, they don't want to be defiled so that they can eat Passover, which is the following day. There are two Passovers here. Two Passovers. If you can see this, this will go very easy. So Pilate came out to them, because they could not come in to him, and he asked them, what charges are you bringing against this man? Now John says, it was the day of preparation. 
This tells us the Jews did not have names for the days of the week. They called them by numbers. God, in fact, never gave them names, just numbers. But they did call the Sabbath, the seventh day, the Sabbath, and they did call Friday the day of preparation. That is well known, the preparation for the Sabbath. So John says it was the day of preparation. And the next day was to be a special Sabbath. A special Sabbath is when you have two holy days aligning at the same time. A seventh day Sabbath and the Passover happening at the same time made it a special Sabbath, a high and holy Sabbath. The Passover hasn't happened yet for the Jewish nation, but the Passover has taken place for Jesus and his disciples. So, it was the day of preparation and the next day was to be a special Sabbath because the Jews did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath. They asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. What does the Bible tell us? The Bible tells us there are two Passovers. Why are there two Passovers? Because there are two different Nisan 15s. Because there were two different calendars. Jesus and his disciples followed the synchrony required by the God-made calendar and the Jewish nation was following the man-made calendar. Let me show you something here that may, that may be helpful to you. Let's see if I can get this on the screen for you. This is a... Um, try to, try to, let me see if I can uh, zoom in here a little bit closer so that you can see this quite well. In AD 30, the equinox occurred on Wednesday, March 22, 10 p.m. We know this. This is very precise. So, Wednesday, March 22, 10 p.m., universal coordinated time, is actually midnight, Thursday, Nisan 1 because night comes before light in God's calendar. Um, this is Thursday, which is Nisan 1, which happens to be in our calendar, Julian calendar, March 23. So, so using, using um, the conversion of calendars here, here's the equinox. And incidentally, this information is taken from the U.S. Naval Observatory. A number of astronomers have carefully researched this matter, and these dates and times are accurate within to about 60 minutes, one hour to two hours. Very highly reliable. Okay, the Bible uh, tells us that Jesus and his disciples uh, observed Passover at the appointed time because he didn't sin. And we, thought we, we know from the U.S. Naval Observatory that the new moon happened on the same day, which happened at local time, Jerusalem time, 10 p.m., which would also be Thursday, Nisan 1. So we have the equinox and a new moon occurring on the same day, and that happens every so often. So we have the beginning, New Year's Day, Nisan 1, happening on a Thursday, Thursday night. And you can see the little star that I've put here, Thursday night, that's the blue area. Thursday light is the white area. So I want you to understand that we have the equinox and we have a new moon in the same darkness on Thursday, Nisan 1, which is our March 23. So now when we come down to the time for Jesus and his disciples to observe the um, Passover meal, Nisan 14... In the afternoon is when they slay the lamb and they begin roasting it and Jesus and his disciples observed uh, Passover at the appointed time, Thursday evening, Nisan 15. Nisan 15, which would be our April 6. And at midnight they ate the Passover and the unleavened bread. Jesus washed the feet of the disciples, you know, and they stayed there in the upper room until sunrise. And then they went to the Mount of Olives, and he spent all day on the Mount of Olives. And this is where John chapters, oh, what is it, uh, 13 through about um, 
uh, 18. This is where Jesus talks to his disciples all day. Then, as sunset, they retire to the Garden of Gethsemane. And then Jesus goes on into the darkness of the garden and invites the disciples to go with him. And you know how Peter, James, and John went with him, but they all went sound asleep because they had been up all night before. And then Jesus is arrested. And then as, as Friday morning, Friday light is, a, is, is appearing, on April 7, he's taken, you know, to Caiaphas and then to Pilate and then to Herod and then back to Pilate and then to the cross. And Jesus dies at about 3 p.m. Friday afternoon. He's, he's on the cross about six hours. And then he is put in the tomb before sundown on Friday. Okay? April 7. Now, the reason that the Jews had not eaten Passover yet is because they waited for the appearing of the uh, first crescent to start their calendar. And the first crescent, you know, is about two days after. Let's see if I can get this on the screen for you. The first crescent is about two days after the new moon. And so the nation of Israel was using a man-made clock instead of the divine clock. And that's why there's an offset of two days. So, by using the, the first sighting of the crescent, Nisan 1 for the nation of Israel was seen on Sabbath, which is two days later than Thursday. And this is why then the 15th of Nisan, using the Babylonian calendar, puts Passover at midnight on Sabbath night. During this, the, the, the day part of Friday, the Jews did not want to defile themselves by going into Pilate's judgment hall because they wanted to eat Passover the following night, that night. That was going to happen. That was coming. Sabbath night. We have two Passovers, one here, one here. This one that Jesus and his disciples observed is according to God's clock. This one here is according to man-made clock. And that explains why there are two Passovers. Following a man-made clock and a God-made clock always produces different results. Jesus and his disciples followed God's monthly clock, which starts Nisan 1 with a new moon. The nation of Israel followed the Babylonian clock, which started Nisan with the sighting of the, of the first crescent of a new moon. The distance between these two calendars is usually two days. Jesus and his disciples observed Passover on Thursday night at midnight, and the Jews observed Passover on Saturday night at midnight. Saturday night being night comes before light. So now look at this. Even though most Christians accept A.D. 30 as the year of Christ's death, Few understand that it is in the middle of the 70th week, and even fewer understand how this date is determined. Solar and lunar tables posted at the United States Naval Observatory website offer astronomical data covering the years during which Jesus was on Earth. This data has been carefully verified by several astronomers through the years, and it is accurate to within one or two hours. The dates and times from the Universal Naval Observatory US, United States Naval Observatory, are given in universal time, and I've already listed the dates for you. And I, I only want to say that for AD 29, AD 30, and AD 31, there is only one year. In fact, in the whole collection of seven years of the 70th week, there is only one year in which all the specifications of Daniel 9 can be met. Otherwise, you get more than two days apart on everything, and everything falls apart, and none of the days of the week synchronize with what is written in the Bible. The specifications that were given say this. The decree of Artaxerxes was given in 457 B.C., which happens to be a Sunday Jubilee year. I'll demonstrate that in our next month's study. 
Exactly 483 years later, Jesus began his ministry in A.D. 27, which was the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar. Right on time. A.D. 30 is the Wednesday year of the 70th week. And according to the U.S. Naval Observatory, the new moon in A.D. 30 puts Nisan 1 on Thursday night, Jerusalem time. Therefore, Jesus and his disciples observed Passover on Nisan 15, which was a Thursday night. And the scriptures clearly say they observe, that Jesus observed Passover before his death. Since the sighting of the first crescent typically occurs on the second day after the new moon, the nation of Israel celebrated Passover on Sabbath night while Jesus was in the tomb. A perfect harmony is found in prophecy. The four gospels and recorded history once understood all come together. Rule four and the synchrony of God's clocks unlock the whole story. The use of two calendars during Christ's times on earth explains the problem. And now we've come to the punchline once again with God. Timing is everything. Jesus was cut off in the middle of the week. He died right on time. Take a look at this picture, if you will. Let me go to uh, the Jubilee calendar one more time. This is a little different picture than what you've seen, but take a quick look here at it. Here's the 67th week. Here's the 68th week. Here's the week, weekly cycle, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sabbath. So here's the 67th week, here's the 68th week, here's the 69th week, and the 70th week. In the middle of the week, A.D. 30, April 7, 9 a.m., Jesus is where he is supposed to be. He meets his death at the cross. And the Messiah is cut off and rejected right on time. Right on on time. I'll tell you something. The more that I understand God's timing, the more that I am amazed at His magnificent interest and concern for this tiny little planet we call home. Jesus came on time. He was born on time. He began his ministry on time. He died on time. He kept the Passover right on time. There's a complete harmony in all that the Bible says, all that history has to offer. When properly assembled, everything's in perfect harmony. Because with God, timing is everything. Well, we've got a lot more to study, but I just want you to know that the Jubilee calendar is perfectly affirmed and confirmed by Jesus the creator of it, when he died and gave his life, he confirmed the synchrony of this calendar. Well, may God bless you, is my prayer.